the flea by John Donne. Mark but this flea and mark in this, how little that which thou deny me is. It sucked me first and now sucks thee, and in this flea are two two bloods mingled be. Thou knowest that this cannot be said, a sin nor shame nor loss of maidenhead, yet this enjoys before it woo, and pampered spells with one blood made of two, and this, alas, is more than we would do. I stay three lives in one flea spare, where we almost yea more than married are. This flea is you and I and this, our marriage bed and marriage temple is. Though yous make you apt to kill me, let not to that self-murder added be, and sacrilege three sins in killing three. Cruel and sudden hast thou since, purple thy nail and blood of innocence. Wherein could this flea guilty be, except in that drop which sucked from thee? Yet thou's triumphs, and says that thou, find not that thyself nor me the weaker now. Tis true then learn how false fears be, just so much honour when you yields to me, will waste as this flea death took life from thee. Metaphysical poets attempt to use syllogisms and conceit to hide their true intention and message. The flea is an erotic symbol, as they would swarm around women's breasts and neck. The freedom of access to the women's body is what Don is aiming for. There is a repetition of threes throughout the poem, three stanzas, three indented lines at the end of each stanza, and threes. <laughs> Metaphysical form, conceited structure, allows the stigma around sexual activity to be removed. The extended metaphor of the flea is repeated throughout. Deniest represents the unrequited advances and it gives an androcentric, androcentric perspective. Two bloods mingled becomes a metaphor for marriage and pregnancy and this is reinforced further in the stanza through the word swells. There is religious motifs throughout through the words sin and shame and maidenhead represents female vulnerability. And lastly, the conceit is further reinforced when Dunn uses the word alas. It alludes to self-pity and hyperbole. The inclusion of Oste depicts the desperation and the short demand that Dunn has towards the woman as he asks her not to kill the flea. The three lives in one flea connotes the Holy Trinity, which was mentioned earlier, and indicates the religious imagery that Dunn plays upon to get the woman to cave into his demands. More than married also is indicating this as he compares the flea to the marriage and religious views are yet again mentioned. Our marriage bed and marriage temple is also further indicates this semantic field of religious imagery by stating that of one flesh and rationalising the attempts to compare them to a church and them inside of it. This says how the married can have sex without it being imposing on her religious beliefs. The parents' grudge also indicates his awareness of the lack of conventionality of this view within the society. The verb cloistered indicates their mixing together and the randomness and lack of order and regularity within the action that they're doing. The living walls of Jet depicts the flea as being black, which is juxtaposing the view of living in light and dark, and the sacrilege three sins in killing three shows again this view of the Holy Trinity and the fact that he's pretending to care for her having the burden of her sins and that the flea is like a church and killing the flea destroys the content of her church and the three lives rested inside. Purple thy nail in blood of innocence. The use of the word nail also suggests the religious theme throughout the poem reflecting the crucifixion of Christ and also at the time blood was referred to as purple. Don is trying to make the woman feel guilty for killing the flea and he's trying to manipulate her to think that he sh should be able to have sex with her. This flea guilty bee is also religious and it extends the idea of the flea being innocent so therefore killing it would be a sin in the same way that her not sleeping with him would also be seen as a sin in his eyes. As he asks the question, except in that drop which it sucked from thee, there's some idea of the lover's voice as it's, there's a question to the lover, yet there's no reply from the woman, so it suggests the patriarchy which is present throughout the, throughout the poem, as the man's desires were seen as most important. Sorry. The alliteration of false fears accentuates the foolishness that the speaker believes the woman to have, and it also gives a harsh tone which also adds to the idea of him trying to manipulate her, and he's d dismissing her fears by calling them false. And in the final three lines of the stanza, 
it starts with tis true and here the speaker appears to be accepting defeat and brushes aside her triumphs and he replaces it with his own tri triumphs and his own ideas and the poem ends with as this flea's death took life from thee and the paradox here is that the flea's death took her life in a way and there's the idea of submission saying that she won't lose any more of her honour than she did by already killing the flea so this is a speaker's shift in argument to say why his views are right and why she should sleep with him and the poem ends before the, the woman gets a chance to respond to the speaker which again suggests the patriarchy at the time oh this is the wrong poem that's a really good start <laughs> uh, in this bit yep hi <laughs> me structure I don't know what I'm saying. Really I'm storage oh, sorry. Um, I have dyslexia proof. <laughs> <laughs> Yet thou triumphs and says thus thou. What? Yet thou. I can't read it! <laughs> Where we almost. What does that say? Like, how would you say that word? Like, so say, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, more. <laughs> yeah, more. <laughs> there. Where we almost. You more. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makeup you out to kill me. No, not makeup. I actually can't read. I don't know how to do this. Thank you for watching.